Hey hey, what is up guys? Today we're gonna put together this future-proof budget PC that does ray tracing and fully supports DX12 Ultimate. Now before we get started and put together this PC, I just want to show you guys what this PC can do for us. And I want to specifically focus on something called DLSS, which basically is a super sampling technology. Here's Red Dead Redemption 2 running at 1080p, very high graphics. On the left, DLSS or Deep Learning Super Sampling is turned off. And on the right side, it is turned on and set to balance. Now tell me guys, can you see any difference between these two apart from the frame rate? Please let me know. Now, I can't see any difference between these two, so to me this is a feature that you want, as it can give you more performance basically for free. But yeah, we're going to talk about this a little bit later in today's video. Anyway, yeah, in this video, I'm going to run you guys through the entire building process from start to finish of this PC, and then we're going to test out the gaming performance in 24 of some of today's most popular games. All items you see me using are linked up down below, you can check it out whenever you feel like. And with that said, let's get started. Let's kick things off with the CPU, RAM and motherboard and the CPU pick for today's build is the Intel Core i5-11400F coming in at $175. Now this is Intel's latest 11th gen Core i5, 6 core and 12 thread CPU with a base clock of 2.6 and a boost clock of 4.4. Now you might be asking, but Robin, how does Intel's new 11th gen CPUs stand against AMD's 30th gen Ryzen? That is a good question. Here is a side by side comparison between the 11400 and the 6 core based 3600. Looking at the side by side comparison, the 11400F is a little bit faster. The 11400 also has a slight price advantage, coming in at $25 less compared to the 3600. However, there is a caveat here. While AMD bundles their CPUs with a pretty competent CPU cooler, Intel does not. The included cooler that comes with the 11400 is bluntly speaking unusable, making it impossible to recommend to anyone. Therefore guys, we are gonna go with this. This is one of Arctic's most popular budget CPU coolers called Esports Freezer 34 Duo, coming in at $40. Now, in order to install the CPU, we also gonna need a motherboard. So coming in at around $100, this is the Asus B560 Prime Plus, a quality budget ATX motherboard that got everything you could possibly ask for, such as PCIe 4.0 support, decent heatsink over the VRMs, and a heat shield over one of the two SSD slots, which is quite nice to see. If you do want to save a few dollars here, I recommend having a look at the DS3H from Gigabyte and you find it linked up down below. In order to install the CPU, all we need to do is to line up the triangle located at the left side corner of the CPU with the triangle on the motherboard socket, pull back the retention arm, line up the triangles and simply drop the CPU in its socket. return the arm back down and this will release the socket cover. I recommend you guys to save this at a safe place in case you ever have to turn your motherboard in. The cooler installment process is super simple. Line up the included backplate with the CPU cooler installment holes and install at the four included standoffs. Then apply a little bit of the included thermal paste and position the heatsink over the CPU so that the four standoffs align with the four outer holes on the cooler. Then carefully tighten and secure the cooler using the four included thumb screws. And that is it for now. We're going to wait a bit with the fans until we are done with the power supply installment and the cable routing. Now we can proceed to the memory and for today's build we are gonna use this Corsair Vengeance LPX. This is one of the best budget 16GB kits that you can pick up right now. 
coming in at $60. This is the 500GB unit, uh, the M.2 unit that we're gonna use in today's build. Simply install the unit with a 45 degree angle and secure it using the pre-installed M.2 screw. We're going to use a case from Fantex called Eclipse P360A. This is a mid tower with great airflow coming in at $80. Now you can adjust the included RGB fans using the button at the top in a wide variety of colors and patterns. Thanks to the well ventilated front allows for maximum airflow over our components for a cool and quiet PC operation. I'm very happy with Fantex as a brand overall and if you happen not to be interested in RGB, I recommend having a look at the P300A which offers similar build quality for just $60. So let's go ahead and install the motherboard. Now something to have in mind here guys, don't forget the motherboard IO shield and you'll find this inside the motherboard box and this goes in from the back of the case with these circular cutouts uh, pointing towards the bottom. Then we can go ahead and secure the motherboard. Grab the power supply, slide it into its slot. Make sure that the fan is facing downwards. Now I'm not gonna go over the cabling in today's video. And if you're interested, you can simply watch any of my previous videos basically for exact details how you should go about setting you know everything up. So with the cabling done, let's move on to the graphics. This is the GeForce RTX 2060 that targets 1080p at high level of details with ray tracing turned on. Now what I particularly like with Nvidia's RTX lineup is that they support something called DLSS or Deep Learning Super Sampling and this is a technology that increases the graphics performance using dedicated tensor core AI processors. Now DLSS taps into the power of deep learning to boost frame rate and generate beautiful sharp images and the technology is started to get adopted by many games now which is very awesome to see. Now spec wise the 2060 comes with 6 gigs of G6 memory which um, yeah, is enough to achieve respectable frame rate in most AAA titles in 1080p high settings. Ray tracing and DLSS are two additional features that the 2060 offers. Despite the fact that the 2060 is now several years old, it can still give AMD's recently released Radeon RX 6600 XT a battle in ray tracing. Here we got the 6600 XT on the left and the 2060 on the right. Same scene, similar settings and almost the identical frame count. Now that is all bells and whistles, but let's talk about the elephant in the room. Because of the ongoing GPU shortage, the 2060 can be quite hard to find in stock. And if you are unable to find one, I do recommend have an eye on the 1660 Super instead. Pricing is also a big concern. As all of you guys know by now, graphics cards have been very hard to get a hold of and prices are basically through the roof across the board. The 2060 launched with an MSRP of $339, but right now the cheapest I could find on Amazon is at $649, which is a hefty price bump. Right now we aren't 100% sure when prices are gonna go back to normal and for the time being, at least in my opinion, if you don't wanna pay $649, I'll find the 1660 or the 1660 Super to be the best price to performance GPUs that you can get a hold of right now. But if you wanna go cheaper, I recommend having a look at the used market for a 1060, a Radeon RX 580 or a GTX 970. Other alternative can be to pull the trigger on an APU with built-in graphics as a stopgap until prices are back to normal. Anyway, let's take a look at the gaming performance running 24 of some of today's most popular games. 
As we can see here, the 2060 is able to provide high and smooth frame rate in most of the games tested. 1080p at high to very high settings is why you find a sweet spot. And at 1440p, medium to high is what I recommend aiming for. Now, with that all being said, here is what the final part list is looking like, and you should be able to pick up all parts for around 1178 US dollars. This is for the B560M and the 11400F combo. Now, I wanna say thank you so much for sticking around till the end of the video, and this video took a lot of time to complete, so please leave a like or a dislike. And make sure to never miss any of my future videos by subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any suggestions for a future gaming PC build, please let me know down below.